Hey everyone, let's talk a little bit about low self-esteem, what it is, where it comes from. Now, if you experience low self-esteem, which is something probably that you have, I have, everyone has, uh, it's not the most pleasant feeling. You don't really want to get out of bed. You don't really want to do anything fun. It's similar to many other negative feelings that we experience in life. But it's okay because, you know, life is like this, self low self-esteem, high self-esteem, things come and go. But what about those that are less fortunate and experience low self-esteem on a regular basis? It's something that's become a part of their life. Well, it might be that it's become a part of your life. And, well, what can you do? What tools do you have at hand in order to help yourself raise that self-esteem, in order to feel better about yourself, about yourself, about your life? Well, like with many other things, I always start with the most important critical step that you need to really uh, solidify and take care of, and that's awareness. And what does that mean, awareness? Well, on the most basic level, you have to understand what you're thinking. Now, some people have this false attitude that, or false belief that, their opinions, the things they think about themselves, the, thing they, the things they think about others, is the truth. And that's what um, everyone does to an extent, and the really unaware people do that all the time. They really think that their opinions are the truth. And low self-esteem has to do a lot with our incorrect judgments, judgment towards ourselves. So we look at ourselves, we say, or we say certain things, we think our certain things that are usually negative, we push ourselves down, and we believe that it is the truth. But just like opinions to, again, towards other people, the opinions you have about yourself are also opinions. They're not the truth. You may think a certain thing about yourself and think it's the truth. And then you'll have your friend who will think a completely different thing about you and also think that's the truth. Whether that's the truth or not, it's really up to you to decide. But the point is here that everybody has their own truth. In other words, they have their own opinions. And you're no different when you think about yourself. So you need to be more objective about yourself and what you think. And the best way to do that is to become more aware. Becoming more aware means being more objective. When you're thinking a certain thing, ask yourself, why am I thinking this? What am I thinking? Is it leading to anything good? Should I keep thinking it? Maybe should I shouldn't. Maybe it's... It's not true, maybe it's detrimental to me, maybe I should let it go. And this constant analysis of your thoughts, that means being aware, not just thinking and following blindly the things you say and think and, and so on, but actually analyzing them, stopping for a second and asking yourself whether the things that you're thinking have even the slightest truth to them. So that's awareness. You become aware, you become more objective you learn to see things for what they are and the, f the first approach the most simple approach is to of course just to do the analysis so just ask yourself more often questions such as why and what and where and who and that makes you more aware that's just the most basic approach the second approach that i really recommend you do if you want to become more aware is to get a journal just write things down, weird thoughts, strange thoughts, negative thoughts, good thoughts. Just spend like 5-10 minutes every day writing down things that have happened to you. Was there something in particular you noticed about today that was different, that made you feel good or bad? Write it down. It's not much work. It really isn't. But the effects that you get from writing things down are just so many, so much worth it. Just so many times more... Um, more benefit than the work you put into it that you get from journaling and every time you write things down you're becoming more aware and soon enough you will notice notice these negative thoughts in your mind that take your self-esteem down you'll notice them right at the moment they're starting to emerge and you'll stop them right there because you're so aware of them already. You're like, aha, I know what I'm going to think right now. Therefore, I'm not going to allow it to happen. I'm going to think differently or about something else or whatever it is. The point is that you won't, be, you won't be imprisoned by these thoughts. 
you will be in control of them. And that happens through awareness. I always say that if everyone on this planet would be a bit more aware, at least a bit more aware, there would be no wars. We'd be so much better to each other. Now, the last, the other way, not the last, but one other way that you could also raise awareness, but this is not for everyone, but I nevertheless uh, do it and I recommend this through meditation. There are a bunch of meditative techniques that you can do to raise your awareness, and they're really helpful. And this is something you might want to look at into. Just Google it. There's a lot of information online. Now, the second thing, what you should be doing, or you should be focusing on, if, you're, if you notice that you're, you have low self-esteem, is that you're probably, if your, your self-esteem is low, you're probably being overly critical about yourself. It's easy to criticize yourself, to say, ah, this went wrong, that went wrong, everything's wrong, I suck. But that's wrong. There's a big difference between constructive criticism and destructive criticism. If you belong to the category of people that has a low self-esteem, just on a you know, chronic low self-esteem, if you're feeling down all the time, the chances are that you're being critical in the destructive way towards yourself. What's the solution to this problem is to either make it constructive or not be critical at all. So how can you uh, turn that into constructive criticism? Well, again, we're coming back to the awareness part. Ask yourself, am I being critical to, to myself for a reason or am I just being critical for the sake of criticism itself? Do I just feel that I'm, I, necessar I need to you know, criticize myself? If you feel that is, that is your case, then maybe you shouldn't do it anymore. What you can do is always ask yourself that, is this criticism, what I'm telling myself about myself, is it going to help me? Is there something I can learn from it and then use to become better, to make a better, to make improvement and to make a better attempt next time in doing whatever that I was doing? If the answer is yes, then that's good. Be critical, mm, push yourself to grow further and make a better attempt from, by you know, learning the things that you did wrong. But if you're just criticizing yourself blindly, just putting yourself down, then know that it's, that it's the incorrect thing to do. There's no point in doing that. You're just, it, it's called destructive for a reason. There's really no benefit of being overly critical towards yourself. And that's unfortunate the case with many people. And I think that's one of the root causes we do have low self-esteem in the first place. Either we have people that are criticizing us all the time. That doesn't feel good at all. But we're also good at doing it to ourselves. And that, by the way, also leads to the whole idea that surround yourself with the people that, you know, that can help you, empower you to raise your self-esteem instead of lowering it. Or get rid of the toxic people that are just pulling you down. You know, they say that you're the average of five, five people you spend the most time with. I think that's pretty accurate. Try to surround yourself with people that have motivation and encourage you to, you know, to become better. And the ones that don't criticize you. That's very important. Only, critical, uh, only constructive criticism should count. Uh, now, the other thing is, of course, focusing on the positives. Many people, like I said in the beginning, think that their opinion is the truth. And they, they tend to focus on their negative sides. And they start to, um, they think that, well, I did this wrong, now I'm going to do it forever. D completely disregarding the fact that, you know, we learn, we become better over time as we make mistakes, as we do things. Any professional in any field wasn't born a professional. It's not like a genetic thing passed along. Everybody had to learn a certain skill to become perfect at it or really good. And people who, are, who have low self-esteem think that, well, there's, there's two options. Either they don't ever do the thing they want to do because they, they're just too scared to even start because they're already very low in their uh, self-esteem. Or then they start it already beforehand thinking that, well, I'm not going to, you know, make, this is not going to work. And then it doesn't, you know, because it's normal for people to make mistakes. And they're like, I knew it. I knew it. I'm not going to do it anymore. And 
these people tend to focus on the negatives, the things that they did wrong and how people are better than them and so on. They're comparing always themselves to people who are better than them. And that's like the worst thing you can do to compare yourself to somebody who's been doing whatever they're doing for a long time. That's just horribly wrong. There's no way you can feel good about that. Rather focus on the positives. Think about what you did right. Think about how you've learned. Learn to be patient. Patience means, you know, being okay with making mistakes, doing things wrong, and then gradually improving. And then your self-esteem rises because you're focusing on the positives. Again, people around you should help you also. They should help you see the positive sides in you. Please understand that low self-esteem is not a, it's not a sickness. It's not a disease. It's nothing like that. Although it may take people into a really, really, really dark place if, they're, if they don't know how to take care of it. The bottom line is that low self-esteem is just the way in which you see yourself. It's your opinions. It's your, it's your incorrect judgment towards yourself. It's the fact that you're all the time comparing yourself to people, to other people in a, you know, in a really wrong way. As, long, as soon as you just change the way you see yourself, um, things are going to start to improve. And one really important way is to, uh, is to focus on, on the positive sides, on the things that you do good, yeah, or, and the things that you're doing okay and improving over time. You have to understand that comparing to someone who is perfect at something is wrong because you're never going to be like that person. You're not, some people, you know, they, they feel sad about the fact that I'm singing, but I'm, but I'm never going to be singing like them. Well, that's true because every person is unique. You can be really good also, but you're never going to be exactly like them. And that's also very important to understand. And some people can't grasp this idea. They really, they're like, well, this my idol is perfect. I'm trying also really hard and I'm, I'm not getting the same results. I'm not, I'm not exactly like them. And, and some people really, their self-esteem drops because of thoughts like this. But the reality is that they'll never be like them. What you can do is to look at the person you, you, know, you admire, learn from them as much as you can and you know, apply that to yourself. That's how you should be comparing to yourself, just to admire people and to learn from them. In any case, um, like I said, please be patient. Things come with time. Don't, don't fall into false thoughts, into beliefs that you can do something over you know, a day. And then if it, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. No, you know, everything you do always requires work. and Everything comes with time. And meanwhile, while that is happening, you should focus on, your, on the things you're doing well, on the fact that today you've, you've become better than you were yesterday and tomorrow you're going to become better than you are today. And with this kind of attitude, you're going to get really, really far. Number four, take care of yourself. And some people think this is not a, that important, but it actually is. On the most basic level, this means take care of yourself in terms of how you look, how you smell, be clean, be tidy, get a haircut, wear nice clothes, wear clean clothes. Um, you're going to start feeling, you're going to start to feel better about yourself when you look in the mirror, but also other people are going to act, you know, they're going to communicate with you in a different way. It's maybe it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel nice. That's some, you know, we're judged by the way we look, but it's the truth. It's just the way that humans interact with each other. People are more attracted to those people that, you know, are more tidy. Uh, it's, easy, it's just natural. It's nothing to be ashamed of. And you're also going to like yourself more if you, if you're taking care of yourself. And that's just the most like basic level. Just smell good, look good, you know, be clean and stuff like that. Uh, if you want to take it a step further, what you should is do exercise. Physical exercise is amazing. You're going to start to look more fit, which is, it raises self-esteem like to an extreme, but also you're getting rid of toxins. You're uh, taking control of the stress levels, which is also very important when it comes to, you know, self-esteem. 
sleep enough, eat healthy, do exercise. All of these things work together and they raise your self-esteem and you're going to feel better about yourself. There are, you can do it, you know, you can approach this problem from the psychological perspective, you know, just how I think about myself, how I compare myself to others and so on. And that's okay and that's good and you should do that. But you can also physically do things that will make your self-esteem raise. And that's, you know, taking care of your body, your temple that you live in. So take care of yourself. And the last but not least is, of course, begin to challenge yourself. Our self-esteem naturally raises when we achieve things. And once you feel that you're ready to do something outside of your comfort zone, please do it by all means. Just um, create goals, meaningful goals for yourself and start doing step by step, you know, taking them on and trying to accomplish them. And as soon as you begin to accomplish them, you'll notice how you feel really good about yourself that, oh, finally, you know, this is working out and you're going to become more fulfilled and fulfillment is the the it's the it's the gold it's it's what you're after if you're trying to raise self-esteem a person who's not uh, who is fulfilled does not have low self-esteem a person who experiences fulfillment from the from doing the things they do from loving to do the things they do has very very high self-esteem that's what you should be also um, doing basically challenging yourself how you're going to do that i can't tell you it's up to you it may include starting a new hobby it may include starting a business it may include going to a new school or something like that it doesn't matter it's just it just means doing something doing something outside of your comfort zone doing something new because remember like i say everything that doesn't grow dies and i completely completely 100 percent agree with this saying so find something to do and go make it happen. So these were the couple of things I mentioned that you could do, you should do if you want to raise your self-esteem. Hopefully you've learned something from this. If you have and you like the video as always, please hit the thumbs up for me and subscribe for more similar content in the future. And I hope to see you in the next video.